All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be getting into the generators of SO3, right? Before you hit or hit that like and subscribe button, but if you like this kind of content, again, this kind of these kind of videos on this on this playlist specifically are going to go on my Patreon page uh, for you guys to have early access to if you contribute to this channel. Uh, so the generators of SO3 are going to be very important uh, because they're sort of the first step into uh, understanding exactly what rotations are and exactly what our generators of our rotations are going to be. And then later on, we're going to talk about SU2. But without uh, further ado, uh, again, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're into this kind of stuff. And I will, or now let's get into the material. All right, so today we're talking about generators of SO3. So we're actually going to use our definition that we used last time to get these generators. So the generator, we're going to call chi, just like we did last time. Our generator is chi, or we're going to have chi 1. This is going to be our first generator. Our first generator is going to be a generator of a rotation in our, in our X plane, right? And that's what this matrix looks like. If you're not too familiar with what these matrices look like, you can look them up. Uh, you can derive them yourself, but this is sort of more of a linear algebra thing uh, or something that you learn more in a linear algebra course. And so uh, the so what we want to do is we want to prescribe, we want to do our prescription that we did last time. We want to take the derivative of our rotation matrix, set uh, our parameter equal to zero and get our, that's how we get our generator. So here's our rotation matrix. When we take the derivative, we get something that looks like this. And then setting our parameter equal to zero, we get something that looks like this. So this is what our generator looks like. Okay. We can do the exact same thing for a rotation in uh, our y-axis, right? So in the, for the rotation in our y, or not axis, but our y-plane, uh, this is what our rotation matrix looks like. Again, taking the derivative, we get this, right? So remember... If you're not too familiar again with your derivatives, you can go back on sort of you can do a you can check this out on calculus. This is a calculus thing, right? So derivative of uh, cosine, negative sine, and so forth, right? So again, I'm sort of assuming that you know a little bit of calculus going on here, and also a little bit of linear algebra. But anyways, um, so this is what the derivative looks like, and then we set our parameter equal to zero, and we get this guy right here. Pretty straightforward. We can do the same exact thing for our third. We have three generators, right? So for our third generator, we have um, uh, rotation in our z axis, right? So uh, this is rotation in z, and um, our rotation in z again is going to look like this. Setting our parameter equal to zero, we get this. Okay, so summary. A generator for a rotation in X looks like this. Generator for a rotation in Y looks like this. And generator for rotation in Z looks like this. Okay, what does this all mean? Um, well, this means, again, that we have... These are these things don't look like rotations. They, they just don't, right? The, the, what ro rotations look like are these guys. right? The parameters, what's going to uh, tell us how much to rotate by. Right. These things, these just, things just contain ones and zeros. So what exactly does, um, so these things are the generators, right? So uh, what we can find, what we're going to see now, let's take a look at this now, is that these generators are closed. And what does this mean? This means that if we take two of our generators, we can obtain the other generator by through this commutation relationship. Let's see how this works. So we're going to take an example, chi 1 and chi 2, and we're going to see that it's going to equal to this epsilon. Uh, this is our levi Shavita symbol. All right, so epsilon uh, i, j, k um, is, our, is called the levi Shavita symbol. And how this works, if you're not familiar, is so I'm gonna Levi Chavita symbol takes on it'll take 
a set of numbers. It's it's i, j, and k numbers. All right, so it'll take these i, j, and k numbers and it'll spit out either a one or a negative one. So e one two three. If we do that, we're starting here. We're going clockwise, right? So we go one two three. When we go clockwise, uh, that's going to be a one, right? I won't say right, because if this is something you haven't seen before, then uh, yeah, I won't say right. But anyways, so as another example, E uh, three, two, one, right? So that is, we're going three, two, one. So we're starting from three, landing on one, we're going counterclockwise, right? So this guy is going to equal negative one because we're going counterclockwise. This guy is going to equal one because we're going clockwise. Okay. So with that being said, let's take a So our commutation relationship is defined by chi one, chi two, minus chi two, chi one. Uh, and that's going to equal this. So these are all the generators, right? So we put all the generators in here and we're going to see if that equals this. That's what this exclamation mark, where this exclamation mark means. We want to see if this equals this. Okay, so when we do this matrix multiplication, again, this is a lot of linear algebra going on. Uh, we get this, and we get this for this guy right here. Again, we want to see if those are equal. And indeed, what we find out um, is that they are, right? So this minus is going to get distributed to all of the uh, entries in this matrix. Uh, so that's going to make this guy negative. This guy stays positive, so this is our matrix. This is our matrix here, right? One, two, three, is that this is just a positive one. That's a positive one. So we can find out, so what you can do as a little bit of practice or an exercise is that you can uh, see for yourself. You can say, you could practice, say, chi 2, chi 3. What? That's, that should equal 2, 3, 1, chi 1. Right? You could prove to that. Prove, yourself, prove to yourself that this is true. You, this could be if you want to do some little homework or something. You can, you can do that. But you, what you'll find it at is that it is true. Um, and so, this is very interesting, right? We want to keep this in mind. This is sort of the 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 home, uh, not the home. This is sort of like the prescription here because what we're going to find out is that SU two matrices are also going to have a very they're also going to look like this. There's their generator structure or their, com their commutation between the generators for SU2 are also going to look like this. And this is going to lead us to think that if SU2 and SU SO SO3 have similar, what the, these are called Lie algebras, this is a Lie algebra. If they have similar Lie algebras, then they must be one and the same thing. One is just a different representation of the other, right? And I have a little bit of time here. What I want to do is I sort of want to uh, provide a sneak preview as to what's going to uh, go down within the next few videos. This this prescription here. Um, our Lie algebra our Lie algebra is going to uh, give rise or it's going to give rise to different representations matrix different matrix representations we're then going to ask the question, um, SU2 matrices, these are 2 by 2 matrices, right? SO3, these are 3 by 3 matrices, generators. 
the question becomes, well, SO3 matrices, it's very obvious that those act on uh, three coordinates of space, right? because they're three by three. But if they can also be represented by two by two matrices, then what on earth are the two by two matrices acting on? Right? This is a weird question, right? Because they need to be acting on things that have two components, not three components. But they still represent that they still represent something similar to what SO3 matrices are going to be acting on. So you could kind of see, we can kind of get a feel of what this is, uh, what representation theory is sort of all about. It's about, it's go, it's going to be about getting the representation, getting, getting a Lie algebra and all the different representations that fall under that Lie algebra, and then the question's going. Then the question you have to ask is, what are the components of the things that these matrices act on? What what do these components represent? Right. And in physics, we're gonna these components are either gonna be space-time coordinates, right? If we're working with uh, four by four, right? Because space-time is uh, four-dimensional. Um, if we if we we have the similar we have that same algebra, um, the two by two matrices, the two by two SU two matrices. Uh, those again those have to act on things with two components right so spin is what we're going to call those okay uh three by three matrices those are going to be a little bit weird right uh we're going to see those in gel in sort of the gelman case and that's going to be cut uh, the cut, um quark color um and so we're so, so we have su2 su3 su4 the neck the, the the natural question then it's going to be what about SU five, right? Um, I'll write these down. So we talked. So there's this U one, U one. Then we had U two, SU three, SU four, SU five. All of these guys, uh, we can ask the question, right? If the, these guys are going to be, say, like the Pauli matrices, the Pauli matrices, um, these guys here, uh, Gelman matrices, and so forth, um, and these guys here, uh, this is sort of going to be like the Einstein spa space-time matrices, and these guys, I, they take on J values of J and K, right? J. I actually, actually, we'll call them M, right? Because we can, we'll we'll be able to find that um, we can combine these all in uh, as M matrices I J. We'll we'll see how this works later. Su five, right? So we're I kind of want to get into SU5, but this is it. that might be towards the end of wherever this playlist is going to end up. Um, a lot of there's a lot of theories on um, sort of unifying physics uh, and grand unified theories, right? So this is going to be this is going to talk. We're hopefully going to talk about string theory, string theory. Maybe twister theory. Um, but we'll, we'll see how far we get with this playlist, and if we if we want to do that in this playlist, if or if we want to make a whole new playlist for SU five. Um, but anyways, and then these these one guys right these, these are um, this is just like an exponential. Right, where we're, you're not exponentiating a matrix, you're just exponentiating i. But anyways, um, this is that's for, that's what's to come, and hopefully that'll get you excited. It's it's definitely a very interesting area of physics. Uh, the idea that all of these things 
uh, if you can find all these things that obey uh, Lorentz transformations or obey the, the Lorentz algebra, um, then you can recover all of physics, which is something I think worth thinking about. I've definitely thought about it a lot, and it's very, very interesting stuff. So with that being said, I hope you like this kind of content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.